Hello and welcome to the 11th episode of my cryptocurrency series. I'm wearing a cap today because I haven't cut my hair and it's on the weekend, so don't mind that. Today I'm going to talk about the OR network or Open Right Exchange Network. I'll be honest, it took me a bit of time to study this project and understand it because I work in cybersecurity um, in my day job and I sort of understand the concept, but there are a lot of nitty gritty details that I had to figure out. So I'll try to simplify the project for you. And this is a good potential project that I'm going to invest in next week as well. And I want you to understand it and maybe join me in investing on it. Just a disclaimer, there's no financial advice in this video. And I have no interest in this project. I don't receive any profit. I don't receive any benefits. It's simply, I'm just investing. And I always only put videos that I invest in. So OpenRight Exchange, from what they claim, is basically its own blockchain and it's uh, optimized for single sign-on for uh, identities and for managing this digital asset and real world asset across chains. So what that means is you can use this service across different chains. So across Ethereum, across uh, Algorand, Polkadot Data Ecosystem, EOS, Telos and Vax as a single sign-on account. You don't need to have like a MetaMask wallet and a Solid wallet for Solana or a Vax wallet to, to log into a different ones. Now, in, apart from that, it also helps you connect to the off-chain for the mass adoption. Because a lot of the companies right now, even though they're interested in blockchain, one of their issues is how could they connect their users to the blockchain? Millions of users trying to get onboarded. And OpenRise Exchange is trying to address the mass adoption issue as well with the very simplified user experience and API call to connect off-chain. Um, and that's for connecting decentralized finance, NFT, other things like banking as well. So that's the problem they're trying to solve. And at the same time, remember, when your account is sitting with Google, when your account is sitting with um, Facebook, you don't own a lot of the details. Even though you created the account, they might share it with other companies. What OpenRight Exchange is trying to do is give you that control as well for your identity and access management. So it's decentralized, it's seamless, but at the same time, it helps you maintain the control. Now, one of the unique selling points for this project I found was shown in the pitch deck. So the unique selling point is, as I've also mentioned, let me zoom in, the centralized identity access management in, in uh, Google, Apple, LinkedIn, and Facebook, they have high amount of reach, but the fundamental issue is that um, you sort of don't own your identity. It's not decentralized. It's centralized. And you have seen issues a few weeks ago, what happened with Facebook, uh, with the identity and access management. The other problem is we have a few projects right now doing those blockchain ID, but sometimes they're still connected to the centralized or it's targeted at some consumers that are on-chain only. And you need a bit of knowledge to use these services. So what Open Rights Exchange is trying to do is it's decentralized. It's a fair system for users, but at the same time, it's connecting Web One and uh, sorry Web Two and Web Three in terms of uh, public key because some people may not be interested to use blockchain. Maybe they just want to use a QR code. Maybe they just want to use an NFT. Maybe um, just a single sign-on. So I, I haven't seen a lot of projects solving that problem yet, and that's where Open Rights Exchange is trying to show their unique selling points and targeting them. And in terms of the market opportunity as well, they have a huge market opportunity. So they are saying that the market cap of blockchain is 1.84 trillion. That's probably an old pitch deck. Now it's 2.3 trillion. And the number of blockchains that we have, they're basically saying how XRP or Ripple, Stellar, have this huge market caps and the service they're providing, as well as the question interoperability that they have with Chainlink, Cosmos, or Alliance Block. And what Open Rice is doing is having business model, the B2B business model of XRP and Stellar, as well as being a cross-chain uh, product. So I would think of them as chain link, for example, that they are interoperable regardless of the chain, but for your identity and access management sort of thing. So they're not competing with other blockchains. They're going to add value to other blockchains, actually. Um, for example, you would have a seamless experience as well, not just on-chain, but also off-chain. For example, your opening doors, real estate functionality, uh, KYC, and other things. Now, 
you need to really understand the product offerings that they have to understand how they work. So there is a few products that they have and you can even find it on the website, by the way, they have a lot of users already. So that's something I really like. So if you go to their website, you can see they have Orwell, they have ID, they have all these products. And to explain it simply, ID is basically your identity and access management function for this project. And that's what is built as a decentralized application on the protocol of Open Rice Exchange to help you manage your identity and access management. The other product that they have is more on the NFT and sharing rights. And for that, I would like to actually refer to the white paper itself. So I give you an accurate information. So the first product I was talking about was more on the identity and access management. And if you see this picture in the white paper, user login, they create a or ID, the registry is updated, you get an encrypted key, and then you also have a backup in, in, in the, to deliver to the user. And when you want to do a signing or transaction on chain, you get the pass, you put the password and then they send the encrypted password and you sign transaction and they use something called chain.js to deliver it to the desired blockchain. So that's one product or ID. The second one is more like a vault. And that's a shared share of all the or IDs, especially for businesses that they have to manage digital assets, they have to manage a lot of uh, identity. That's basically the product. And they talk about how the architecture works. Um, the next one is the or active NFT. And this is more to help you with global usability of using NFT on chain and off chain. And you can you can do different things. You could, for example, use it to stream, as they say, stream video content and have right to use it in, um, give the right for that video or that content for someone else also to use. Again, what is unique about this product is as a, for example, product managers, you're probably concerned when you use an on-chain uh, product for identity and access management and Open Right Exchange has the right team and right product for you. So you don't have to really wor worry about it. Now, in terms of which layer this is sitting, this is not a layer one solution. This is, they call it a layer 1.5 which is they're going to collaborate with other chains. They're going to collaborate with, um, again, Algorand. They're going to collaborate with Ethereum. And you can even see it in the roadmap that the integration with Algorand is the Telos, Vax, Bitcoin. And then next year is going to be Cardano, Polygon, Casper, Avalanche. So they're going to work with them and help them with the identity and access management part for the decentralized applications built on those on top of the decentralized applications that will be present in open right exchange, which are more focused on, I guess, um, security and authentication type of things. Now, one thing you also need to understand is these three products they have, open source and open right, chain.js, or.js, and or verifier. Chain.js, that's what I think, that's a chain link functionality that they have. It's a JavaScript basically library providing that interface to connect or with other blockchains. ORJS is also a library that helps you access the, the entire protocol. And then the verifier is the signing and transaction verifier that's being used. So you can also check them in GitHub. And this is the basic product they have. One question people ask, because when you go to their website, they say, what's ICON? And then what's the difference between ICON? And what's the difference with OR? So ICON is the, not, uh, ICON is the for-profit company that works for marketing and also connecting with those decentralized application that is going to be built on open right exchange but open right exchange itself is not for profit and even if tomorrow icon is not there the blockchain is still there they still have block producers and that token economy will continue to function so this is very important to know the differentiation and the source code is open, open for everyone. So that's also a very good thing to see, being transparent. Now, what I liked about what they have in their pitch deck, they also have already customers and how they're being used. So they have Republic. Republic, if you don't know, is a crowd investment platform, not just for crypto, it's for crypto projects, but also for uh, smaller projects that are startups and nothing to do with blockchain. And they're working with Algorand to launch their first tokenized equity. And of course, they can use OR ID 
for the identity and access management. Alliance Block is also another customer already with OID. And the other customers that they're showing on their website is Meld. Meld is basically tokenizing, buying, and selling gold. AI Market is also another customer. So you can see they already have very, very strong um, customers that have millions of users. And this is something I really like because it's not even launched yet, the token, but they already have customers, they already have products, they already have uh, applications even running on, on, their, on their projects and they have dApps. I, I had um, Mark from the team talked about Authentium, which is gonna be a project that helps you track the supply chain from uh, farm all the way to the dinner table of people who are buying those fresh produce. So that's something really interesting as well. And they're also doing some gaming, NFT, and uh, play to earn in terms of identity and access management. The other part that's interesting to look is the token functionality, what's the use for the token, as well as the token economy. So the token usage is quite simple. You use the token for uh, creating the account, creating the identity, and also there are basically three different functionalities they're using. So they're saying that you're either an account creator or you're managing the account or you're doing a verification in the account. And that's basically how the economy works. So if you go to the white paper, for example, they say you need 0.1 or tokens to get additional public keys. To sign a transaction, you need 0.01 or token as fee. If you do minting NFT, you need to pay 0.01 and so on. So that's the token economy and how it's distributed between the network participant as a transaction fee. And this is the feasible option. So rather than staking, they're trying to say that the usage of our service will be how people get rewarded and people who hold our token. Now, tokenomics also is something I'm interested in, and I like the tokenomics. So the token supply is 1 billion and 60 million IDO price is 0.06 of a cent, so sorry, six cent. Fully diluted valuation is $63 million. And they have different prices in obviously pre-sale and in seed round, but they're gonna launch on three launch pads and the price is gonna be uh, six cents. But the good thing is they're gonna distribute it 40% on the first month, 20% in the next three months. And if you can see the pre-sale or we call it private sale, they won't get any token for the first few months, which means the price is gonna remain consistent. The node operators also need to wait a month. The team has to wait a few months. The advisors need to wait a few months. So these are really, uh, I guess, bullish factors for the token economy. And basically no one who has invested will have the whole token on the day one. And you can see the market cap is going to be only $800,000 once they launch next week. And then it's gonna go 1.5 to three. So sort of develop, but obviously the market is gonna to adapt to that. And this is a good one because some projects, the first month is very enticing the token and the market cap. And then suddenly you will see a huge um, dump because a lot of people who are private sale owners start selling. So. I'm a big fan, really big fan. Whoever did the token economy did a very well done job. Now, in terms of the team, they have a lot of team members on the project with a lot of experience and you can search them, they're open. So that's also another good thing. They're all open there. You can search them up. But the few people I'm interested is Mark himself. So Mark has a background working in um, other startups and big companies like Adobe as a director of social marketing and strategy which gives him the good foundation he needs to run this project. I was also interested when I studied Trey and he also worked in companies like Connect, Akaba and Stream Productivity. And these are pretty good companies as well as uh, Microsoft. They also graduated from good universities like MIT, uh, Princeton and uh, other universities. Caitlin used to work for Ripple. So I guess that Ripple factor, I see why it's there in the pitch deck. And, now she's working in this company and um, hopefully I'm uh, spelling it right, but uh, Foo Styles, she's a very, very huge influencer in blockchain and top 100 blockchain influencers graduated from um, Stanford and followed by very big people. So that's very good person to have as your advisory. So they have a really ace team actually. The other part I would like to talk about is the social media. 
social media they have only 10k followers right now on um twitter and i think around 5k on telegram i'm not sure about their other channels it isn't as big as some other projects that are close to launch but remember a lot of these projects pay or use bots or use uh, airdrops so i wouldn't be concerned i actually participated in a sale of a project that had the engine starter that had 6,000 followers on Telegram, but it, it did really well. It did like 50X. So that wouldn't be something that you need to worry about. I need to also give you the detail for launch. So for launch, they're gonna launch on three different platforms. It's gonna be on OcomFi, which is Ocom Razor, and it's sort of connected to Cardano. ScaleSwap, our favorite launchpad, which is gonna be on Polygon Network and pools pools also a very respectable launch but i don't know on is it going to be on ethereum or is it going to be on polygon uh, i know the token is going to launch on both polygon and also ethereum so you probably see them both uniswap and quickswap as the decentralized exchange but yeah i don't know the details for pools so you could research it yourself the ideo itself is going to be on the 12th on the 12th of uh, this month so in uh, i think tuesday 12 p.m utc and it's a very good project. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention is I, I, I shouldn't always just say good things about projects. I do have a few feedback as well. So I think there's a few things or needs to improve. One is that some of the information here, like tokenomics, like the, the products needs to be, uh, I guess, more clear. Maybe they can have a frequent um, or FAQ questions. And over there, they can put the questions and answers for people to quickly navigate because I had to spend a bit of time understanding the different products, the different chains, how it works. It really makes sense to me now, but it's just that I'm, I guess, more experienced in both blockchain and security and not everyone is. The second part is some people might be concerned that, okay, I have one identity. What if I lose it or what if I get hacked? So maybe, maybe talking about that in the future AMAs, Ask Me Anything sessions or YouTube videos, that's going to be something to explain. I'm not so worried. I have my own reasons, but I don't know other people. So that's something, especially people who are security conscious. The final part is they did mention banking and some other businesses. Sometimes when you connect blockchain on-chain and off-chain, then you're subject to some of the regulations of those countries that these businesses operate. And this is where you need to make sure you have the right licensing. And I guess, again, this is something to be conscious of and explain. Other than that, I didn't find anything wrong in the project. I'm very bullish on the project as well. In terms of my prediction of how well this project will do, today um, we can see the market cap is 2.3 trillion. So from my first video to now, we've almost gone up by a trillion dollars. You can't see that in any other sort of investment um, business. And all of the recent ideas I have done, market is green, and all of the recent ideas I have done, they did pretty well. But I'll be safe, and I would say this project probably will do between 6 to 10x or 600 to 1000 percent of the return on investment of that point sorry on that six cents of the ideal price i am again not giving you financial advice this is just a prediction i'm having and this might happen over the month like might start a bit slower and then grow but remember because they don't have those private sale tokens released as much in the first month you won't have a lot of um, dump happening especially in the first couple of months so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe my channel. This was a tough one especially to make. So I appreciate it if you share it with your uh, community, share it with your friends and make sure to like and uh, increase the reach for this channel. Thank you for watching my video and see you next time. Thank you.